Um, in this video, we're just going to do two problems, solve two problems in some detail. Um, and when you look at these problems, what I want you to get out of them is what physics we're using. The physics is, is subtle, but it's, it's very, very clear. Uh, and also that we're not involved in any you know highly detailed calculations not doing pages and pages of algebra you know some of these courses you might have done um, you've got each problem is pages of algebra okay and um, they sort of gen generate into into sort of low level applied maths courses rather than physics courses here the emphasis is on the physics okay now in fact these two problems we're going to see now um, you Presumably could have solved them in previous courses, um, but I think if you met them in exam tomorrow, you might have some trouble. Um, and so it's good to do some, some revision of this kind of problem, even though you've seen the stuff before in many cases. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at the first problem here. Okay, so we have uh, a um, an air conditioner of a house that uses solar energy, and the solar energy that is used comes from a large tank of water which is maintained at 205 degrees centigrade okay so on the roof there's solar panels or some sort of solar system which is heating up a tank of water and it keeps the tank of water at that temperature okay so of course if you have a tank of water at a high temperature we can um, uh, use it because it has to be under pressure it's at 205 degrees C we can use that uh, to um, uh, to drive an engine, okay, and says during a particular time interval, heat in the amount of a thousand kilojoules must be extracted from the house to maintain its temperature at twenty degrees C. So the house is always at twenty degrees C when the outside is at thirty two degrees C, okay. So it says treating the tank of water, the house, and the surroundings as heat reservoirs. So we've got three heat reservoirs. We've got tank of water. So here's our house. Okay, we've got this tank on the roof. Here's our tank. That's at 205 degrees C. Here's the house, which has to be at 20 degrees C, and outside is 32 degrees C. Okay, so we've got three heat reservoirs. They have to be constant heat reservoirs. Determine the minimum amount of heat that must be extracted from the tank of water by any device to accomplish the required cooling of the house. Okay, uh, no other sources of energy are available. Okay, so during a particular time in the heat, a heat in the amount of 1,000 kilojoules must be extracted from the house. So we need to get 1,000 kilojoules out of this house and dump it outside. Okay. So what are we going to do here? We've got three, three reservoirs. That one, the house, and the outside. Okay, let's, let's do it. All right. So um, let's go first to the, uh, the tank. So we've got the tank the house and the surroundings, and there we go. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna extract heat from the house and dump it in the surroundings, that's what we have to do. And we do this by running an engine in reverse as a refrigerator, okay? So a refrigerator can take heat from a cool system and dump it into a hotter system, a hotter reservoir, but of course, you have when you do that, you have to do an amount of work W, okay, which we don't know about yet, and that amount of work allows us to take heat from a cold source and dump uh, so heat from a cold source and dump it into a hot source. This should be hot source. Okay. Now, where do we get this in work W from? Okay. Well, to get the work W, we need another heat engine because we don't have any any source of W. Um, and this is a normal heat engine, and it takes heat from the tank. Okay. Dumps it in the surroundings down here. So heat goes through here, some of it goes, the dumps in the surroundings, the rest of it goes as work. Okay, we've got some work going on there. That work then allows us to um, take heat from the house and dump it in the surroundings, which is actually hotter than the house. Okay, so we've got a refrigerator here and a ordinary heat engine there, and they're running together. The heat engine provides the work for the refrigerator, um, and the refrigerator takes the heat out of the house and dumps it in the surroundings. Okay, so what kind of heat engine are we going to use? Well, we're going to use Carnot engines because uh, they don't exist, but they have the maximum efficiency. And we're asked for the sort of minimum amount of energy we need to use, um, so minimum amount of heat. 
So um, we like go for maximum efficiency. Um, now, why don't Kano engines exist in reality? Because they require adiabats, which means fast stuff, and isotherms, which generally means slow. So it's very hard to make something which approximates a, 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 um, a Kano engine. Okay, but here's, here's our system more or less, um, taking heat uh, from the hot reservoir, the cold reservoir, making some work, which then allows us to take um, heat from the cold reservoir um, and put it in a hot reservoir. Okay, this is, this is upside down compared to the, the uh, previous diagram. All right, so here's, here's, our, here's our particular system here. Now, I want you to recognize how simple this is. Okay, so let's look first at our refrigerator. This is the refrigerator section, okay? It's effectively a Carnot engine, um, being run in reverse, but it's a Carnot engine. Now for a Carnot engine, you know that it's reversible and you know uh, the entropy change um, must be zero in a complete cycle. So all you have is QC on TC plus QH on TH equals zero for a Carnot, a Carnot engine, okay? Um, and Carnot engines, of course, are run at, at, at between two reservoirs, um, one's at TC, height temperature, and one's at TH. Okay, now we know that we have to extract a thousand joules from our um, our house, okay, and that house is at two hundred ninety three degrees Kelvin, okay. So we know what that is, and we know what that is, okay. We also know what the temperature of the um, place where the, the the reservoir we're dumping the heat which in fact is actually hotter than the house, or colder than the house, sorry. It's that, okay. Um, and, uh, sorry, it's actually hotter than the house, of course, the reservoir we're dumping the heat in. Uh, so we know that, that, and that. And so that allows us to calculate what QC is, which is um, how much um, heat we're actually dumping into, our, um, into the surroundings. And of course, that has to be larger than the amount of heat we took out of the, um, out of the house. Uh, and it's, it turns out to be 1,041 1, um, kilojoules, okay, when we do we use this equation here, okay. And the work we needed to put in to do that um, is just given by the first law, noting that du equals zero for a complete cycle of our engine, so w plus qh plus qc must equal du, this first law of thermodynamics equals zero, so we must be doing 41 kilojoules of work in order to, to, to do this, okay. So we... We take uh, 41 kilojoules of work, put it into our engine here, our refrigerator. It extracts 1,000 kilojoules from the house and dumps 1,041 into the environment. Okay, so first thing is to make sure you understand that particular part. All right, next bit. Where do we get this work from? Well, we get this work from running a heat engine. This particular thing is a heat engine. It just It's an ordinary heat engine. It takes uh, heat from a hot reservoir, uh, dumps it into um, a cold reservoir and at the same time produces some work. Okay, so again we write down the Carnot cycle uh, equation. Okay, entropy change is zero. Um, we know the temperature of our hot reservoir, we know the temperature of our cold reservoir. Um, we know how much work is done, W. Okay, so we then have equations which are like this. We know this equation here. Um, and we have this equation here, so we've got an equation for Q1 and Q2, another equation for Q1 and Q2, because we know W, we can um, solve those equations uh, and get that Q1 is equal to 113 kilojoules. Okay, so that's how much um, heat energy we had to extract, use from the hot water tank. And that's, I think, is the question we were asked to start with. Where's the question? Okay. Um, where, where do we actually ask the question here? Uh, during a particular interview, treat the tank as water, determine the minimum amount of heat that must be extracted from the tank, and that's what we've done, okay? Which is, where we go back to here, it's, um, it's 113 kilojoules, okay? So, um, this has a two-step thing, it's a two-step two -step process, um, so the question is quite tricky. I think if you had to do this in the exam, you'd be really scratching your head, but you can see it's a very simple, um, application of Carnot engines just done twice. Okay, now we could do this question other ways as well. Um, we could use the efficiency formula of the heat engine, which is the efficiency is work done divided by heat input, um, which is one minus TC on TH for a Carnot engine. Um, and that's 
identical to the first law. So there's nothing extra here. You could just use that instead of the first law. We could use always use the first law for the whole system, which says, because we're going around in a reversible cycle, um, we must have ds equals zero. Um, so we can write down this, q tank on t tank, this is not the first law, but the, the, the second law, that, that plus that plus that must equal zero. And the first law will give us conservation of energy, which is that for the whole system. So we could use those two. Um, we have two equations for two unknowns, q tank and q surroundings, so we can solve this again. So we could also do it that way. Okay, so there's several different ways of doing it. Um, but I think um, once you've figured out that you have to ha have uh, a heat engine and a refrigerator, then you're, then you're okay. Okay, so you might ask the question, can we reverse this system? And the answer is yes. We can extract 1,041 kilojoules of heat from the surroundings, okay? Dump 1,000 kilojoules into the house, so we take some heat from here, dump it in the house, get 41 kilojoules of work, okay, which is used to power the tank engine. It extracts 72.3 kilojoules of heat from the surroundings here and, and dumps them into the tank. Okay, so we could just reverse this if we wanted to. Okay, so I don't know what we'd want to, but we can do that. Okay. Can we use another engine cycle here? Well, yes, but it has to be one that operates between two fixed temperature sources. Okay, remember, we have here, uh, temperature here, temperature here, temperature here. And we need engines which can operate at fixed temperature sources. Okay. Um, you know, it can use the auto cycle. Okay, well, not really, because it doesn't have any isotherms, okay? Just adiabatics and constant volume processes in the, in the auto cycle when heat is added and dumped, okay? The auto cycle is reversible in principle because it's following a quasi-static path, but we would need a whole series of reservoirs to follow the constant volume curves in order to transfer heat reversibly in the engine. So we, we'd need something to modify this and get, get a whole series of different reservoirs, uh, not just this one, this one, and this one. So that would be quite tricky. Um, we could use a Stirling cycle, which of course has, um, it's reversible, it has exactly the same efficiency as the Carnot cycle, um, and it does have two isotherms, okay, um, so we might be able to use a Stirling engine to do this. Um, but what we've done here is calculated the minimum amount of heat we need to extract from our tank, and in a real system we, we would need more than that. Okay, so go back and review that, that particular problem see what's going on. It is really simple, but you know, um, there's a lot of thinking involved. All right, second problem. Um, we're gonna look at the Peltier refrigerator. Now the Peltier effect um, occurs when a current is passed between the junction of two materials, okay? One side gets hot and the other one gets cold. So all you need to do is you have, here's, here's your material. We have um, a current being passed here. Oh, let's, let's draw a battery. Okay, we pass a current around here. This is two dissimilar materials here. This is, you know, maybe copper and iron. Okay, and if you do that, what Peltier, I think it was a French physicist, found was that you get um, you get a temperature gradient. One side gets hot, the other side gets cold. Okay, and of course, if you've got the cold side hooked up to the inside of the refrigerator, you get refrigeration. Now, normally the Peltier effect these days is used for semiconductors, and it's a little bit more complicated, but it's the same principle. Okay. Um, and uh, the opposite effect is the Seebeck effect. If you have a, a, um, a junction, a metal junction of two dissimilar metals and you heat one side, you get a current flowing. So that can be used to generate a current. Both of these effects are extremely inefficient, um, but in some cases they are actually very useful um, because here you can make a thermoelectric refrigerator. Now what's the point of that? Well, they do have some advantages. No noise, okay, there's no moving parts, so no noise there, okay. No compressor, which is the same thing as no noise, but of course compressors have, you know, um, lots of moving parts to wear out and they make a terrible lot of noise, um, which an ordinary refrigerator does. They have very low weight um, because they don't have all this machinery in them, no, no compressors and lots of liquids and things. Um, they have no moving parts to wear out, so it's great if you're going to Mars, okay? And I think they're also used in those uh, uh, refrigerators you can take on, you know, in your caravan and things like that, okay, or in a, in a car, okay? But as I said, they're woefully inefficient, okay? But, um, you know, there's a price to pay for excellence. All right, so our fridge must get rid of 350 watts of heat, that's what we're told, um, because heat keeps leaking in through the walls, okay? So we need to get, get rid of 350 watts, which is quite a lot of heat. The external temperature is 298 degrees, K 
Kelvin, and the fridge uses a thousand, 100 watts of power. Okay? What is the minimum temperature the fridge can maintain? So we're told the outside temperature, we're told the amount of heat that's leaking out from the fridge, we're told how much work or power is used up by the fridge, and all we want to do is know is how much, uh, what's, the, what's the minimum temperature of the fridge. Okay? So, um, how do we do this? Well, surprise, surprise, we do the best we can, which is to use a Carnot cycle. Okay? Again, we're going to write down QC on TC plus QH on TH for the cycle, for the cycle must be zero. We have a cycling process, to, you know, use a state function, but U is zero. We can write down the first law, U is there. This is conservation of energy, okay? So W must equal the work we need to put in, must be QH plus QC. QH is bigger than zero, and QC is less than zero, all right? And the efficiency is given by this thing. Now, that's for Carnot cycle. We're gonna ro ro run the thing as a refrigerator, okay? And the refrigerator has basically the same equations, um, but uh, it takes work in, takes heat out of a cold source and puts it in a hot source. Okay, same equations before, um, ds is zero. Okay, du is zero. We write down the conservation of energy. And the only difference between this and the heat engine are the signs. Okay, w is less than zero for, for a refrigerator. You have to input work, it doesn't output work. qh is less than zero, okay and QC is bigger than zero. Heat is taken from the cold reservoir and it's dumped into the hot reservoir. Okay, but the signs are different, but the equations are the same. So let's do it, okay? And, oh, before we do that, we can define um, a uh, coefficient of performance for our refrigerator, which you might have met before, which is heat taken from the cold source divided by the work input, and that turns out to be TC on T hot minus T cold. Okay, so that's a coefficient of performance. Now, um, in our system, in one second, we get uh, W uh, is minus 100 watt seconds. Okay, TH is 298. Um, QC is um, 350 watt seconds. And if we put um, this equation and this equation together, uh, you can solve for the temperature of the um, refrigerator itself and find that it's 232 degrees Kelvin. Okay, so that's a very simple, that's simple in the first problem. We're just running the thing as a refrigerator, uh, and what we find is that's the minimum temperature that we can possibly achieve in the refrigerator on a continuous basis. Okay, and that's the end of those two problems. Go back, look at them, make sure you understand what's going on here. Okay, mathematics is simple, physics is, uh, you know, not so obvious, but in fact it's, you know, there isn't, there isn't much of the physics here either. But you really need to understand how to apply the first and second laws, in particular the Carnot cycle, to 